welcome to this deep dive. Uh. This time, it's a battle heating up the dev world. Oh, yeah. Node.js versus yeah. Gopher building REST APIs. Yeah. Now, you're probably already familiar with these languages, at least a little bit. Right, right. But we're going deeper today, deeper than just the hype. Yeah. We'll be dissecting what really matters for senior developers. Exactly. We're going to break this down into a real head-to-head -head comparison. Okay. Focusing on the stuff that really makes a difference yeah. when you're dealing with those complex projects. Right. Performance, scalability, even how each language handles those errors. Yeah, those inevitable errors. Right. Nobody likes them, but... They always pop up. They're always there. As a senior dev, you're not just thinking about getting something to work. Right. I need to think long term. Yeah. How will this scale? when we have a ton of users. For sure. Is this going to make my life easier or harder six months down the line? Precisely. And that's where a deep dive, like, this is really going to help. You yeah. need to understand the strengths of each language, but also the pitfalls. Especially when you're building something mission critical. Absolutely. Okay, so let's jump right into the ring. Okay. First up, Node.js. The chap. It's everywhere. It's right? everywhere. Powering everything from those huge streaming companies to real-time apps. Mm-hmm. What are the big advantages for Node.js, specifically when we're using it for REST APIs? I think. What makes it so popular? Node.js really shines, I think, when it comes to speed right. and the ability to handle a ton of simultaneous connections. Right. So think real-time applications. Okay. Think streaming platforms. Anything where you need to keep things moving smoothly. Right. Make sure it's responsive. Even with thousands of users just hitting your servers all at the same time. So very performant under load. Exactly. Makes sense. And of course, Node.js, it's built on JavaScript. Yeah. Which means there's just this huge ecosystem of libraries, yeah. tools, well, yeah, so a gigantic developer community. Oh, yeah. That's got to be a huge plus for teams, right? It is. Being able to, you know, use that existing JavaScript knowledge, yeah. tap into that ecosystem, and oh, right. quickly find solutions to problems yeah. can really speed up development. Yeah, absolutely. And let's not forget, Node.js is what we call battle-tested. Oh, yeah. Companies like Netflix, LinkedIn, PayPal. Huge names. They're all heavily invested in Node.js. Yeah. You know, it can handle the big workloads. Right. That's a pretty impressive resume. It is. It is. But... But... I know you're not going to let Node.js off the hook so easily. No, no, no. We got to... Every technology has its downsides, right? It does. It does. Where does Node.js start to show its limitations? Right. Especially when we're talking about seasoned developers like yourself right. dealing with these large-scale projects. Complexities, yeah. Yeah. I think one of the biggest challenges with Node.js comes from JavaScript's dynamic typing. Okay. It can make debugging a real pain. Yeah, I can imagine. Especially as that code base grows, yeah. you might not catch those type errors until runtime. Oh, yeah, that's right. That can lead to unexpected behavior and some frustrating debugging. I've been there. We've all been there. Yeah, many times, yeah. Anything else that tends to trip up those experienced developers? I think asynchronous programming in Node.js, okay. while powerful for handling those concurrent requests, mm -hmm. can also be a source of complexity. Yeah, right, right, right. So as your application grows, right. managing those asynchronous operations, the callbacks and the promises, it can get tricky. Yeah. Sometimes leads to what we call callback hell. Callback hell. It's a fun place. Every developer's favorite vacation spot. Exactly. Okay, so Node.js, it's got its strengths, it's got its weaknesses. Yeah. But clearly, it's a major player in the REST API world for a reason. Oh, for sure. Now, let's turn our attention to the contender. All right. The up-and-comer. Created by Google. Yeah. Known for its performance and concurrency features. It's a beast. What makes Go appealing to developers? I think Go is really built from the ground up for speed and efficiency. Right. It compiles directly to machine code. Okay. Which means you're getting performance that's closer to oh, wow. C or C plus yeah. plus right. those languages that are known for their raw speed. So when performance is critical, Go starts to look very attractive. Extremely. Huh. And it's got built in concurrency features yeah. using Goroutines and channels, which yeah. are fantastic for handling those massive numbers of requests right. without bogging down the system. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Think of it like this. Okay. Go makes it easier to write code that uses all those cores on your servers, okay. making the most of your hardware. So it's really well optimized. Yeah, right out of the box. And we're seeing, of course, big names like Uber, 
Medium, mm -hmm. even Google themselves using Go. Google uses it for a lot of things. Yeah, for some pretty serious projects. Yeah. Clearly is gaining traction in the industry. Definitely. But Go is a relatively young language, right? It is. Especially compared to something like Node.js. Does that youth translate into limitations? It does. That maybe more experienced developers should be aware of. Yeah, and I think one thing that can be a bit of a sticking point yeah. is Go's lack of generics. Right, yeah. This can make code reuse a bit trickier. Yeah, I can see that. Than in other languages like Java or C Sharp. I see. You might end up writing a bit more boilerplate code Okay. just to handle different data types. Right, right. And while the Go community is incredibly active. Oh, it's a great community. It's growing very rapidly. Yeah. It's still not as massive as the Node.js community. It's not. So you, you might have to dig a little deeper sometimes. Yeah, for sure. To find those answers to specific problems. Right, especially if you're working on something cutting edge. Yeah, that's a good point. Or outside the normal use cases. That makes sense. But the Go community is known for being really helpful. Okay. And the documentation is great. Yeah, if you run into something unique, you can probably find support. I think so. Okay, so we've laid the groundwork, right? Yes. Right? We've got Node.js, the JavaScript powerhouse, mm -hmm. known for its speed, its flexibility, massive ecosystem. That's monster. We've got Go, the up-and-comer. But it on the block. Built for performance and concurrency. Yep. Now let's get to the heart of this deep dive. All right, let's do it. Node.js versus Go, head-to-head. Head-to-head. -to -head. Specifically for building those REST APIs. Yeah. What are the key battlegrounds here? One of the most obvious battlegrounds is just raw performance. Okay. How quickly can each language process requests, Rough. handle concurrent users, right. deliver data? Yeah. And this is where Go often starts to pull ahead. Okay. That ability to compile to native code yeah. and that efficient concurrency model give it a real edge. Yeah. Especially when scalability and fast response times are non-negotiable. So if you're building a REST API that needs to handle tons of requests yes. like a real-time stock trading platform or a large e-commerce site mm -hmm. ghost performance advantages are pretty crucial extremely important yeah but it's not just about raw speed right we also need to consider how each language handles those errors yeah of course that crop up during development and in production right you can't avoid them and node.js and go actually take very different approaches here all right i'm intrigued let's dive into that next let's do it let's do it Node.js follows that familiar try-catch model oh, for yeah. exception handling. Right. That's yeah. pretty common in a lot of languages. You mm -hmm. know, wrap your code in a try block. Right. If an error occurs, it gets caught by that catch block. Pretty standard approach. Yeah, very standard. So what's different about Go? Yeah, what's different about Go's error handling? Go takes a much more explicit approach. Okay. So instead of relying on those exceptions, mm -hmm. Go functions can actually return multiple values. Okay one of which can be an error object. Right. So this forces developers to actually acknowledge okay. and handle potential errors. So you have to think about it up front. You have to think about it up front. Instead of just hoping you'll catch it later. Yeah, exactly. Huh. At first, yeah. this can feel a bit more verbose. Right. But it really encourages a more disciplined approach. I see, yeah. To error handling. Okay. And it leads to more robust and predictable code. Yeah, yeah, I get that. And I think for experienced developers mm. who have seen their share of production nightmares, mm, yeah. that predictability can be a real lifesaver. Absolutely. When you're dealing with these complex systems, right. knowing how your code's going to behave when those errors happen yeah. is absolutely crucial. Crucial, yeah. Can't avoid them. Right. So we've talked about performance, yeah. error handling, mm. some pretty crucial things for senior devs. Right. But... Let's be honest. Sometimes the choice between languages oh, yeah. comes down to something less tangible it does. developer experience. That feeling. What's it like to actually work with these languages <sighs> day to day? Yeah, what does it feel like? Yeah. What kind of feel do they have? With Node.js, you get that rapid development speed right. and the flexibility that JavaScript is known for. Okay, yeah. You can iterate really quickly, yeah. prototype ideas, get things to market fast. That rapid development cycle. And plus, with that massive community, right. there's always some new library or framework right, popping up all the time. trying to solve your problems. But I imagine that flexibility can be a double-edged sword. It can be. Right. Sometimes that rapid evolution can lead to breaking changes. Oh, yeah. And managing dependencies can be a bit of a juggling act. Yeah, I've been there. Go, on the other hand. Okay. With its emphasis on simplicity. Right. 
clarity, explicitness, mm -hmm. it promotes a much more structured approach okay. to coding. So Go might feel a bit more rigid yeah, at yeah. first, Yeah. but that structure probably pays off in the long run. It does, especially when you're talking about maintaining large code bases. Right. It's like the difference between <laughs> building a house with a set of detailed blueprints okay. versus just kind of winging it. Right. Both approaches, you get a house, yeah. but that blueprint approach is going to be much easier down the road. Way easier to maintain and modify. Right. Good analogy. Thank you. So we've covered a lot of ground here. Yeah. And I think one thing's becoming clear. What's that? There's no one size fits all answer. Nope. It depends. Yeah, as always in software. It depends on the needs of your project, mm -hmm. the experience of your team, yeah. what you value most. Exactly. But if you had to give some guidance okay. to our listeners All right. who are wrestling with this decision, node or go, Yeah. what are some key questions they should be asking themselves? First, I think they need to think about performance. Okay. If they're building something that needs to handle massive scale, high concurrency, right. very low latency, mm -hmm. go might be the choice right out of the gate. Right. But... If speed to market is the top priority and the team is already comfortable with JavaScript, yeah. Node might give them a big advantage. Huge advantage. They also need to consider maintainability. Okay, long term. Though. Long term. If they're building a large complex system mm -hmm. that needs to be supported and extended for years to come, right. Go's emphasis on clarity and structure yeah. is going to pay off big time. And if the project is more experimental, yeah. maybe requires rapid prototyping, yeah. Node.js's flexibility in that vast ecosystem might be better. It might be. And don't underestimate the importance of the team's experience. Right. If the team is already fluent in JavaScript, yeah. Node might be a smoother transition. Makes sense. But a team that's got a background in systems programming yeah. might feel more at home with Go. So it's all about weighing the trade-offs. It is. Understanding the nuances mm -hmm. and making that informed decision. Exactly. Based on the context of the project. Yeah, and remember the landscape is constantly evolving. Right, always changing. What's considered the best tool today right. might be different tomorrow. Which brings us to a crucial point, mm -hmm. continuous learning. Continuous learning. As senior developers, yeah. we know the tech world never stands still. It's always changing. Right. Always something new to learn. Sure. Some new framework, some new approach to solving problems. Yeah. How do you stay ahead of the curve? Right. Especially in a field like backend development. Right. Where yeah. languages like Node.js and Go are always evolving. I think that's where a mindset of continuous learning is so important. Okay. You know, don't be afraid to experiment. Yeah. Step outside your comfort zone. Right. Try new things. See how it all fits together. See what works. Yeah, see what works. It's like that saying, right? <laughs> yeah. The more you learn, the more you realize you don't know. That's it, exactly. That's so true. But that's what keeps it fun. It does. It keeps it exciting. That's what keeps it interesting. Right, right, yeah. The key is to stay curious. Keep asking questions. Yeah. Just be curious about how things work. Always learning. And how you can build better applications with that knowledge. Exactly. Yeah. And I think one of the best ways to learn is by doing. Oh, absolutely. Don't just read about Node.js and go. Get your hands dirty. Right. Get your hands dirty. Build something. Right. Experiment. See how these languages work in practice. I couldn't agree more. Maybe set up a little project. Yeah. You know, maybe a simple REST API yeah. that just fetches data from an external source yeah. and try implementing it in both okay. Node and Go. That's a great idea. You'll start to see the strengths and weaknesses. Wonder You'll the... see how they handle things differently. Right. What works better in different situations. Yeah. 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 You'll really get a feel for it. And who knows? Right. Maybe one just really clicks for you. Yeah. Or maybe you'll find they both have their place. Right. Depending on what you're trying to do. Exactly. It always depends. As always, it depends. It always depends, right? Yeah. There's no right or wrong answer. Exactly. It's all about finding what works best for you. For you, your team, and the problem you're facing. Right. Hopefully, you found this comparison valuable. Yeah, I hope so. As you navigate this ever-evolving landscape of back-end technologies. Yeah, it's a crazy world out there. It is a crazy world out there. It's been a pleasure. It has been a pleasure. Sharing these insights with you. Thank you for having me. Until next time, happy coding. Happy coding.